all set up. So let's do some real talk right now. I have not seen too many people post breakup. In fact, at this point, I'm 31. I don't even know where to meet them. Like, do you do it organically and go into a Starbucks? Or just randomly meet someone out at the mall? Or like at the bar? Or do you go on dating sites? Do you not go on dating sites? I don't know what I'm doing. I want to put this out there just because I could use any advice in the dating world as possible. And I find that some of my Tinder experiences have been downright uh, mind-boggling, like mind-blown. I like to call what I'm about to tell you a Tinder implosion because some of it is just so odd and bizarre that maybe you guys can help me decipher what some of these either signals mean, what I could be possibly doing wrong, or if I didn't do anything wrong and this person is probably single for these very reasons. So I'm going to call this Adventures in Tinder Dating Episode 1. Of course, I will change the names to protect the non-innocent. I haven't seen very many people post breakup. Um, my relationship ended, I would say, in early February. It had been sort of ending months prior to that. But really the end of it was, I remember before Valentine's Day because I was alone on Valentine's Day. I spent it with girlfriends. One of the first people that, uh, well I decided obviously to sign up for Tinder. And the reason why, there was a specific reason why I chose Tinder is because when I had previously been on dating sites, I was just getting a ton of people that I wasn't interested in. And the one nice thing about Tinder is not only is it very um, easy to kind of scroll and see if you're physically attracted to anybody. You know, it's very easy to use. You don't have to log in and read through a ton of messages. Basically, the only, if you're new to Tinder, the only way that you can be connected to that person and match up to them is if they've liked your photo and you've liked their photo. So initially, there's already like a physical attraction because you've both liked each other. I'm not sure if people read through profiles. I actually do appreciate when someone puts what they're looking for um, because if they're looking just for something like a fling or like something short and sweet, it's not really my style at this point in my life. So I appreciate when people are honest and put it out there that they're not looking for anything serious, that it is more casual for them just so that I know going in that I'm not interested in that person. If they don't have anything, then you're kind of have to guess and you know, I don't like guesswork. Like one of the first uh, guys that I started talking to on Tinder, we'll call him Snake, because it's very close to his name actually. So we'll call him, I'll refer to him as Snake. I started talking to Snake and um, he actually messaged me first and I appreciate that in a guy because I'm very shy and reserved when it comes to dating. Like I'm very old fashioned that I like the guy to initially reach out to me and if you know, once they do that, of course, I'll start, you know, engaging with them and chatting back and forth, but I do like a guy to pursue me. So I started talking with this person and I appreciated that they messaged me and not only were they good looking and of course one of the photos, I guess he was with his like niece or his nephew and I just love a guy with babies. I think that's the cutest thing. Um, really good looking guy and I really didn't know ver very many pieces of information about him after we had started talking other than he was from Long Beach. He worked, I know he had his, his uh, doctorate, so I, and I believe he had his doctorate in psychology, so I know that he had a private practice, and he was 33, and uh, played basketball, I know he played on a basketball league. Other than that, I really didn't have, after chatting with him for a couple weeks, very many pieces of information. I don't know if he was being secretive, or some people are just a little more reserved about putting themselves out there. And I can certainly understand that. I'm fine, no problem. So we're chatting, and not only is he a really good looking guy, but you know, we seem to want the same things. You know, he wants a family, he's very um, ambitious and career oriented. You know, I like the fact that he's a man's man, he played a lot of sports. And he's very smart and very witty and sharp, and I love that about him. So we're chatting and he tells me, he apologizes off the bat and tells me that he's going to have to take things really slow, that he's recently out of a relationship and, you know, his last girlfriend really burned him. And I was okay with that because I had just been recently out of a relationship and, you know, I was fine with taking things slow. 
I said, no problem, you know, I'm, I'm recently out of a relationship myself and I would be happy to take things nice and easy and slow and just, you know, see kind of how we are together and like go from there. We were texting pretty much all day every day for several weeks. So I, not that I was emotionally invested, but there was a huge time investment there that I was like, okay, you know, we obviously have a lot of chemistry, we have a lot of things in common, so, you know, let's, uh, let's finally meet. Normally a guy would ask to meet me, um, and I'd be a little more reserved. I'd want to get to know him a little bit better before we decided to meet in person. But I thought it was strange that, you know, this guy almost seemed to, like, just love being pen pals. And I'm like, okay, we should meet. Like, let's meet for coffee or let's meet for dinner. Or let, like, let's meet for drinks. So I'm waiting for him to ask me on a date and it doesn't happen. And like I said, a couple weeks went by and finally I was like, okay, you know, like I think we have a lot in common. I'd love to, you know, grab drinks with you or dinner. Gets really weird. And my friends are like, oh, he's probably got a wife and children and he's probably just, you know, he's probably just on here for, you know, for a hookup. And I'm like, okay, well, if he just wants a hookup, then we kind of need to meet to do that. And that was not the vibe I was getting from this guy at all. And then I start thinking, okay, well, maybe this guy has four really good looking pictures of himself and it's not really him. It's someone else, you know, pretending to be this good looking guy. But then he started sending me like other photos where I'm like, okay, this person obviously is who they say they are like they have other additional photos like he'd send me a photo of himself in his suit after work or he was sending me like um you know you can post moments in tinder so i was fairly confident that that it was him but i thought it was really strange how he how he was very weird about meeting in person and you know we had we clicked a lot Obviously, we moved things from Tinder to text message, and we were texting with each other a lot. And, you know, I was fairly comfortable with him in order to go meet him in person, and I kind of wanted to see, like, okay, well, we have a lot in common, like, chatting with each other on text, but, you know, chemistry in person could be very different. So I was like, let's meet. I kind of wanted to see if there was chemistry in person, and I think that's very important to find out. So... You know, every time, again, that I would ask him or kind of hint that, like, hey, we should probably meet up and get coffee, like, what are your plans? He'd be like, oh, well, you know, I, I have this going on or I'm very busy with work. And he just never seemed to have the time to either meet up with me or, you know, he would make up an excuse that he was too busy or, you know, whatever. So at this point, I'm kind of, like, checking out and I'm like, you know what, if he's not going to make time to meet up with me on a date... If we were to move forward in the future and see each other, it seems like he doesn't have very much time for a relationship. So I said to myself, I committed to myself that I was like, okay, I'm not going to put any more time into chatting with this guy until we meet. So I kind of like backed off and I was like, maybe he's freaking out. Like maybe he's getting all these feelings back, you know, um, after the the prior relationship that he had and that could be very scary if you're coming out of a very hurtful you know relationship where the wounds are fresh to me it's reasonable that a person could be a little apprehensive about meeting no problem I was like I'm not gonna push him when he wants to meet fine but until then I'm not gonna talk with this guy all day every day and keep getting myself emotionally invested and time invested with someone that I I don't even know if they exist in person I kind of back off and we didn't talk to each other for like a week and I was like, okay, that's the end of, uh, that's the end of it. And the other strange component that, you know, he knew my last name, um, he knew where I was from, he knew where I worked. I only had a couple of pieces of information and every time that I said, hey, like, let's connect on Facebook or like, hey, do you have an Instagram? He got strange again. Like, he would never tell me like, I don't know the guy's last name, other than knowing that his name is Snake, he's 33, he lives in Long Beach, he plays basketball, knowing that he has some psychology practice, a private practice, um, and I do know that he worked for a non-for-profit on the side, which is kind of like his passion, you know? I really didn't know very much else, and I thought that that was strange after talking to someone for three weeks. How do I not even know your last name? I, to me, that was just very bizarre, and... I kind of, like I said, backed off, and then a week later, he messages me out of the blue and was like, oh, I really miss talking with you. I've been really busy with work. I've been locked in the library. Um, I guess he still writes um, educationally, like, papers uh, for publish 
publishing. And so he was like, I've been really busy with work, but I've been thinking about you a lot. And, you know, I miss talking with you all day. And, you know, he's like, so we kind of started back up talking for a couple days. And then again, I was like, hey, like, do you want to meet, you know, at, at a wine bar this weekend? Like, what are your plans? And again, weird, like just stops messaging me. Didn't talk to him for like a month. And then I had a moment of weakness. I went out for happy hour and... Those damn cocktails at Roots, they're so strong. So I had like a buzz going and I was like, you know what, I'm gonna message him. And I didn't say anything too mushy or crazy because again, I didn't really know him too much. And I didn't really like the way that we left off, but I think I messaged him like, hey, I was just thinking about you. Um, not really sure like what went wrong, but you know, in any case, I hope you're doing well. I just wanted to let you know that you were on my mind. Nothing. So I'm like, okay, you know, it hurt. I miss talking with him as well, but, you know, that's what you get, you know. On Tinder, you don't really know what to expect. It could be a win, it could be a loss, you know, you're not really sure what they're looking for, they're not really exactly sure what you're looking for, and I was thankful that I really only put in like a month, a month and a half with speaking with this guy, but of course I was disappointed because not only did I think he was really good looking, but he was really witty and funny, and, um, he was very smart, and those are all traits that I really admire when I'm looking for um, for a person that I want to potentially spend the rest of my life with. I got the answer that I was looking for when he did not message me back, and to make a long story short, two months go by, and I've seen only two guys in between then. I went out on a date with someone. Um, and then another person I went on a couple dates with. I'm pretty picky, so I, it's not really often that I find someone that like I really like um, enough to set up a date with. I think I've only seen maybe three or four guys um, in the four or five months that I've been single. And a few of them are only like one daters. So anyway, I'm in bed last week and Again, my mind was just boggled um, by this because I tried to find this person. I don't know if you guys know, but I do social media for a living. And so I'm very um, integrated into the social media world. And I really tried to find this guy because I thought that something was very strange about him. And I thought maybe if I could locate him on Facebook, I would find the answers I was looking for. That maybe he was hiding something or he wasn't he wasn't who he said he was. Just dirt on him, I guess, trying to find out why this person is behaving in the odd manner that they're behaving. So in any case, I could not find him anywhere. I looked like I did searches by name, by location. I tried to find him on LinkedIn based on what he said his profession was. Um, I know he's on Facebook because when he would send me pictures, it'd have like a Facebook link at the top. He would like screenshot a picture. And so I saw the Facebook link. I know he was on there, but he just wasn't comfortable to give me his name, which again, I don't, how do you, how do you talk to someone for a month and a half and you're so secretive about your last name or just, I don't know. It was just all very strange circumstances. So I could not find him anywhere on Facebook. So I figured he's either A, not comfortable about sharing his social media or B, he's hiding something. That's kind of the conclusion I came to, but it drove me bonkers. Like I spent way too much time trying to locate Snake and um, it was just taking over and I was like, okay, enough is enough. Like this person has occupied way too much of my time and they're not worth it and move on Rachel. Like there's other fish in the sea and you just got to keep moving forward and look, it wasn't meant to be. There will be someone else. So I'm in bed last week and I get a message from Snake at like 12.30. So he was either drunk or, I don't know, I don't know. I, I don't, I'm not sure why you would message someone at that late hour. I clearly am in bed um, at that time. I have work the next day. And I get a message and it's like, hey, I like, what do you say? Hey, I like Oreos too. And I was like, okay, first of all, like, where the hell has this person been for the past two months? And second of all, that is so creepy. Like, I posted Oreos on my Instagram because, if you know me, like, my one weakness with sweets is Oreo cookies. And so, what was strange about it is that not only have I not heard from you, so it's random just to message such a 
weird thing or a random thing, but that means he's following me on social media because my Instagram cross post to my Facebook page, so he either saw it on my Facebook page or saw it on my Instagram page. So it was very, like, big brother, <laughs> like someone was watching me, for me not to know his last name or anything about him or his social media and for to get receive a message that he clearly was following one of my social media accounts and saw that I like Oreos and then just two months later decided to message me, I like Oreos. So I think I wrote back like, hey, like where the hell have you been? And he messaged me back, found a girl, unfortunately I'm looking for a woman. And I, st I started laughing to myself because he probably was alluding to the fact that like whoever he was dating was a girl and he needs someone more like me, a woman. And I, all I kept thinking to myself was, I am not flattered <laughs> at all. Like, you disappeared on me, made it look like I did something wrong or just, you know, that that there was something wrong that you didn't want to meet up with me. And then you go and date someone else, like disappear. Don't even tell me. I, I appreciate honesty. I don't mind if someone says like, hey, I met someone else. You know, I'm sorry, things didn't work out, but you know, you're a great girl, you'll find someone else. That to me is admirable. Like, I would accept that. To just disappear or act really strangely and have odd behavior and then message me two months later and say, I am found a girl, unfortunately I'm looking for a woman. No, 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 no. So I was like, well, I'm happy f that you found a girl. Unfortunately, this woman is unavailable or something like that. And he was like, you're right, I'm sorry, I shouldn't have just disappeared, and I just never wrote him back. That's my first Adventures in Tinder story. Leave me in the comments below if that is just weird. I mean, would you, if you just stopped randomly talking to someone, would you two months later go back and say, hey, I met someone else and they're not what I'm looking for, so maybe you are, after you kind of left off on not a good note? So, I don't know, to me, I was just like, get lost, but I mean, I don't know. The dating today is so strange and I also feel like because of my age, you either find people that either aren't serious, they're not ready to settle down yet, or you find strange people or bizarre people and that's why they're still single um, because there's like a social awkwardness about them or I'm not really sure. <laughs> And I'm not really sure where I fit into either of those two. Um, I think I've had, pretty, I've dated pretty good guys that just for some reason did not work out for for one reason or other. Um, whether it was you know just on different pages or um, yeah, see, even Godiva is upset about this. E either on different pages or just not the right timing. But I cannot say really anything bad about any of my boyfriends. Just dated good quality guys, and that's from like waiting for the right person and being picky and very selective about who I choose to date. So, in any case, if you guys have any dating advice for me, please help me out. I don't know if that story struck a chord with anyone or you have any similar dating experiences or any dating advice, but if you do, I appreciate your comments. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I will see you all in my next video. Bye!